In this video, I'm just going to go over briefly some of the most common sheet metal hand tools and machinery that is commonly used in the HVAC uh, industry. Uh, tools and machines are an integral component of a lot of our sheet metal work. Without them, we are not able to build the, the pieces that we're going to need, our elbows, our transitions are squared arounds, all of that stuff. They make it impossible to lay out, form, bend, and join those metals together. So knowing how to use them and how each of them does a part is actually important in order to become a successful sheet metal worker. So there's also a very big variety of hand tools that are still important to a lot of the sheet metal work that you are going to uh, get into. Uh, the hand tools tend to be used in specialized circumstances to do custom and small run jobs, uh, but there's a, a, a whole bunch of, of tools that will be used in the uh, HVAC industry. Uh, as you can see here, you'll have hacksaws, you're going to have files, chisels, hammers, mallets, screwdrivers, pliers, wrenches, and hand punches, just to name a few. Obviously, we all know what the hacksaw looks like. Uh, we can use a hacksaw to uh, cut the metal um, if needed. Hacksaws can either be fixed frame or adjustable frame. Okay, your adjustable frame hacksaws have several different blade lengths. They can be anywhere between 10 uh, and 12 inch blades. The number of teeth on the blade can also uh, vary anywhere between 14 and 32 teeth per inch. You'll have your files. Your files are uh, categorized according to their shape, size, teeth, and coarseness. They can also have two basic shapes, your blunt and your tapered. Some considerations need to be made when selecting the proper file for a job, such as the type of metal that's being filed, the surface finish, uh, the shape, the location, the size of the part that's going to be filed, the amount of material that has to be removed. Um, there are also two basic filing methods. You've got your straight filing and your draw filing. When straight filing, the file is pushed lengthwise, straight ahead, or at a slight diagonal across of the work and then the file cuts on a forward stroke and is raised off of the work on the return stroke. Dragging the file on the back stroke causes the teeth to actually dull out. Your draw filing produces a finer finish than your straight filing. It is a convenient method for making smooth square edges on small surfaces or for accurately finishing a flat surface. So when using the draw filing method, the file is held firmly in both hands at a right angle to the work. The file is then pushed and pulled across the work. Your single uh, cut files are most commonly used for your draw filing. You will also run into chisels. Okay, Chisels are used to cut, shear, or chip cold metal. Chisels are used with a hammer in a two-handed operation. One hand is going to hold the chisel, the other one's going to take the hammer and strike the hammer against the chisel to make a cut. There are four common types of chisels that are in use. Your flat chisel, tape chisel, round nose chisel, diamond point chisel. The flat chisel is used for general cutting work, commonly used to chip metal, cut thin metal sheets, or cut rivets and bolts. Then you have your cape chisel. Those are tapered to a narrow cutting edge and is designed to cut grooves and keyways and corners. Your round nose chisel is used to cut grooves and to chip inside corners. The diamond point chisel is used to cut grooves and to square your corners. It is a square that to at the point and ground at the angle across the diagonal corners, making the cut cutting surface like a diamond shape. Your hammers and your mallets are very, very common. 
in uh, sheet metal work. Those are going to be used to strike uh, your chisels, your punches, and other general striking tasks. Uh, your hammers are classified by the weight of the head without the handle. Okay, hammers are commonly made of steel or alloys, while mallets are usually made out of leather, plastic, rubber, or wood. Okay, common used metalworking hammers. You got your machinist hammer, riveting hammer, setting hammer, and your mallets. Okay, your machinist hammers are going to be either a ball peen, a straight peen, or a cross peen. Okay, ball peen hammers are most commonly used. Then you have your riveting hammer. Those are going to be used to flatten seams and rivets. These are normally as uh, has a small head to eliminate damage of the surrounding uh, metal. Your setting hammers are also used to flatten seams and to flatten or form your metal. Your riveting hand, uh, hammers are also known as your sheet metal hammer. The mallet is used to apply light blows to materials that might be damaged by a heavier blow from a hammer. So you might use those for certain tasks. You have your screwdrivers. Obviously, those come in different types of, of um, heads. You got your flathead and your Phillips screwdriver. Your flathead screwdriver has a straight and flat tip. Okay. Choose the screwdrivers whose blade fits snugly in any screw slot. A poorly fitted screwdriver can damage the screw and screwdriver blades. Okay, your pliers. The pump plier, the primary purpose of your pliers is for gripping, but they are also used for cutting and forming metal. Okay, your slip joint pliers have an adjustable hinge useful for holding different sizes of work. Your needle nose pliers are used to hold work in tight spaces and the shape light metal or wire. Your diagonal pliers are used for cutting wires, nails, pins, and screws. Utility pliers are can hold large work in their parallel draws and are ideal for heavier duty work. Your wrenches, they can be either adjustable or non-adjustable. Okay, your adjustable wrenches have an adjustable jaw to accommodate for different sizes of nuts and bolts. Your non-adjustable are fixed. Okay, your hand punch. Okay, these are used to punch holes into your, your sheet metal. They can be used for indentations, marking locations of holes, knock out rivets, loosen pins, drive objects through the metal. Okay, punches used for metal work are either solid punch, pin punch, prick punch, or center punch. Okay, the solid punch is used to make small diameter holes in different gauge metal. It is also used to knock out rivets after the heads have been cut off to, a, to loosen the pins. The pin punch is used to drive the pins out of the holes in the metal. Your prick punch is used to transfer measurements onto sheet metal. Your center punch is used to start a hole to be drilled. The center punch will create a slight indentation in the metal to prevent the drill from wandering during the drilling process. Okay, the center punch point is at a 90 degree angle. You also have your hand snips or shears. Okay, these more work much like scissors, but only to cut metal. Okay, the blades on snips are either straight cut or a combination cut. Okay, your strip, your sheet metal snips are usually going to be color coded. Your red handled snips will cut metal with a right handed curve. Your yellows are going to cut straight and your greens are going to cut left. You can also have a variety of these types. These types are used for your tight areas where you might not necessarily have a lot of room to work. So you can also have these types of, of shears. The sheet metal snips are strictly used for cutting sheet metal only. You cannot, under any circumstances, use them to cut bolts, wires, or anything else. If you do, you will damage the blades and the things are no longer good. Okay, your shears, after a layout is complete, the metal is cut 
out of the sheet metal. In addition to the, your hand snips, you're going to have other hand-operated machines that are available for cutting the sheet metal, such as these. This is your your throatless shears, and these are used extensively in sheet metal shops. This machine can be used to cut irregular and circular patterns. Your foot-operated cutting shears. These shears are a necessity in most sheet metal shops, and they can cut up to 15 gauge sheet metal. This machine is based on the maximum width of the sheet metal the machine can actually handle. So basically with how this guy actually works, you would take the sheet metal, cut it to whatever size you are looking for, and then step on the pedal, and the sheet metal will actually get cut. The sizes of your sheet metal ranges can be anywhere between 30 and 36 inches. You do not cut band iron, wire, or heavy gauge metal on these type of machines because obviously you will nick the blade causing irregularities in the cut edge. You will also see forming machines in addition to cutting and punching operations performed with snip shears and punches. Metal can be formed into arcs, spirals, circles, cylinders, and cones. These machines vary from small hand operated formings to much larger motor driven bending rolls and forming machines. Here is a slip roll forming machine. This machine is used to bend sheet metal into a curved form. The sheet metal is formed by all three rollers. The front roller grips the metal and forces it against the rear roller. This action bends the metal around and form in front uh, of the upper roller, which will then form a cylinder. The distance between the geared rollers depends on the thickness of the metal, and the distance can be adjusted by adjusting the adjustment screws on the lower front roller. Raising the rear roller will, incre will create a smaller radius, and lowering it will have a larger radius. Okay, the standard forming rolls are around 18 inches wide. Your powered slip roll machines, uh, this guy is the same type as what we just saw. This one's only electric. This one will actually use a pedal to start and stop the machine. Okay, and this is used on 16 gauge and lighter sheet metal. Okay, the roll drive is controlled by a toggle control. The covered foot pedal provides instant forward and reverse action. All three rollers are gear driven to ensure even starting and feeding of the material. You will also have what is called a bar fold. Your bar fold bends sheet metal to make forms, edges, seams, and hems. The machine clamps and folds in one motion. It is also used to form edges to hold wire. 45 degree and 90 degree bends can be made on your bar folds. You will also use a bar fold to make drive cleats, which is also used to connect pieces of ductwork together. You also have your rotary machine. This machine is used to make edges on round and cylindrical objects. It contains rollers of different shapes. The rollers pull the metal pieces through them, forming the edge, very similar to your hand-operated can opener. Okay, here you have your crimpers. The crimpers are used to reduce or crimp the end diameter of one piece, allowing it to slide into another piece of pipe of the same exact diameter. Then you'll have your sheet metal break. These usually bend the desired shapes using that type of machinery. It is another important tool in a lot of your sheet metal shops. It is used to, sh uh, used to straight bending on large pieces of sheet metal. We will use your sheet metal brake to make your rectangular and square ducts. And then you will also have what is called the press brake. It is pretty much the exact same thing as your previous brake that we just discussed, only much more extravagant. These are going to be found in much larger shops that performs a wide variety of forming and bending operations. The metal is formed by pressing it into dies. They are not hand operated but run hydraulically or electrically powered.